الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعود بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل الله وما يضلل فلا هادي الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله all the praise is due to Allah we seek Allah's help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray and whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God. There is no deity but Allah, as a wajal, exalted is Allah, the one having no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's final slave and messenger. Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu taqa kullaha haqatu katihi walla tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who have believed, fear Allah as Allah alone should be feared and do not die except as Muslims in submission to Allah. Ya ayyuhaladheena taqu rabbakum aladhi Kalakakum min nafsi wahida, wa kalaka min hausa jaha wa batha min huma rijalan kathira wa nasa'a, wa taku laha aladhi tasa'aluna bihi wa arhama, inna laha kana alaykum rakiba. O people, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from one soul, and created from it its mate, and dispersed from both of them many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand mutual rights and revere the wombs that bore you. Indeed, Allah is ever over you an observer. Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu taqu laha wa kulu kaulan sadidah. Yusli lakum amalikum wa yaqfir lakum dhunubukum. Wa may yuti allaha wa rasoolahu faqad fawza thawzan adheema. O oh, you who have believed, fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. Allah will amend for you your deeds and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and Allah's messenger has certainly attained the greatest achievement. I'm about to proceed. Before I start with the slide before you, I wanted to talk about the blast of the trumpet. Um, I feel I would be remiss if I did not share these two blasts about them. Um, and it just didn't come to me until this morning that I should share this before I share what I am sharing. So I do want to also share with you that we will be Zooming khutbas at 1.15 on Friday from Rollins College. And it is, we, they had asked me to do a series on death. So each sermon will be a reinforcer um, for this on death. And so at 1.15, uh, live with Imam Sykes, we will let you know if that changes. Some people were not able to get into the sermon this week. Now, today, and, and on sorry, on February the 3rd, I forgot to announce that at 6.30 p.m., um, live with Imam Sykes again, if it changes, we'll let you know. I'll be talking about the role of thoughts in Islam and where thoughts come from and how thoughts do not define us. Afterwards, you can ask a question. And so um, today we're going to look at these two trumpets and then we're going to examine uh, what happens um, after the big blast of the trumpet, the judgment, uh, receiving our report card in the right hand or the left hand, and recompense. And this is a sorting out of those who obeyed and those who did not. Uh, we will look at verses 71 and 72 if we get that far and how the disbelievers will be driven to hell and in 73 and 74, how the believers will be taken to paradise. In verse 75, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about how Allah passes judgment on all of creation, animate and inanimate, according to uh, Ibn Kathir. So inshallah, without further ado, I want to pick up on the verse 68 before, and the trumpet will be blown, and all who are in he the heavens and who are on the earth 
will swoon away except him or her whom Allah wills. Then it will be blown another time. So here we see there are two trumpets and behold, they will be standing looking on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the terrors of the day of judgment with its mighty signs and terrifying upheaval. And the trumpet will be blown and all who are in the heavens and all who are on the earth will swoon away except whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. This will be the second trumpet blast, which will cause people to die. By this trumpet blast, everyone who is alive in the heavens and on earth will be caused to die, except for him or her whom Allah wills. Then the souls of the remaining creatures will be taken until the last one to die will be the angel of death. And there will be left only the ever living, eternal one, who was there in the beginning and will be at the end forever. And Allah will say three times, whose is the kingdom this day? Then Allah as a wajal exalted be he will answer himself. It is Allah's, the one, the irresistible. And we find that in Surah 40 verse 16. I am the one existing alone. I subjugated all things and I decreed that all things must come to an end. Then the first one will be brought back to life, will be Israfil. And Allah will command him to sound the trumpet again. This will be the third trumpet blast, the trumpet blast of resurrection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then it will be blown another time and behold, they will be standing looking on. And this means that after they have been bones and dust, they will come alive looking at the terrors of the day of resurrection. And in Surah 79 verses 13 and 14, but it will be only a single Zajrah when behold, they find themselves alive. On the day when he will call you and you will respond with his praise and you will think that you have stayed in this world but a little while. And this we saw in Surah 1752. And among Allah's signs is that the heavens and the earth stand by his command. Then afterwards, when Allah will call you by a single call, behold, you will come out of the earth. And this is in Surah Arum verse 25. Imam Ahmed recorded that a man said to Abdullah bin Amr, may Allah be pleased with him. You say that the hour will come at such and such a time. He said, I thought that I would not narrate to you anymore. All that I said was that after a little while, you would see something of great importance. Abdullah bin Amr, may Allah be pleased with him, said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Dajjal will emerge in my ummah and he will stay among them for 40. Now, the Dijal often is referred to as the Antichrist, and maybe one day, inshallah, we will do a class so that you will further understand uh, the Dijal. I do not know whether he said 40 days or 40 months or 40 years or 40 nights. Then Allah will send Isa bin Miriam, and so many of you have heard my lectures about the return of Christ and how this is authenticated in the Quran and the Sunnah and how he will actually return over in the area. This is prophesied in the Hadith uh, near the uh, actually modern day Israel, Palestine, near where the actually where the airport is. Uh, it's pretty clear in the Hadith. Uh, then Allah will send Isa bin Miriam, peace be upon him, who resembles Urwa bin Mas'ud Athakafi, and he will prevail. Allah will destroy him, the Dajjal, and actually when he sees Isa, السلام, he will melt like ice. Then after that, mankind will live for seven years with no enmity between any two people. Now in Christianity, they talk about the millennial reign. They talk about the return of Christ and they talk about these seven years here. So we see these are things that we have in common as we know the Injil and its original revelation and the Torah and the Quran pretty much all say the same thing except for the case of abrogations, things that Allah changed. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a cool wind 
from the directions of Hashem's, who shall take the soul of every person who is even a speck of faith in his or her heart. Even if one of them were to be inside the heart of a mountain, it would enter upon him. And this is the mercy of Allah, that if our hearts are so closed that it's like inside a mountain, if we have ever believed, if we have had an atom of faith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to accept us. There will be left the most evil of people as light as birds and with the hard hearts of wild predators. Think of the hyena. They will not recognize any good or denounce any evil. Then the shaitan will appear to them and say, would you not obey me? Then he will command them to worship idols and they will worship them. And at that time, they will have ample provision and a good standard of living. Then the trumpet will be blown and no one will hear it, but he will tilt his head to listen. The first one to hear it will be a man who is filling his water trough and he will die when he hears it. Then there will be one left who has, no, has not died. Then there will be no one left who has not died. Then Allah Azawajal will send or send down rain like drizzle or shade. And Nauman, one of the narrators, was not sure of its wording from which the bodies of the people will grow. Then the trumpet will be blown once more and they will be standing looking on. Then it will be said, O oh, mankind, come to your Lord, but stop them. Verily, they are to be questioned. And this is in Surah 37, verse 24. Then it will be said, send forth the people of hell. It will be said, how many? It will be said, from every 1,999. On that day, children will be resurrected gray-haired. And on that day, the shin will be laid bare. And this is found in Ahmed, narrated by Ahmed. It was also recorded by Muslim in his Sahih. Al-Bukhari recorded that Abu Huraira radiallahu on said that the Prophet Sallallahu said, between the two blasts, there will be only 40. They said, oh, Abu Huraira, 40 days, he, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I do not know. <laughs> they said, 40 years. He said, I do not know. They said, 40 months. He said, I do not know. So we all we know, all that Allah has given us is that it has something to do with 40. Every part of a man will disintegrate apart from the root of his backbone. And out of that, he will be created anew. Uh, and this is from Fath al-Bari. So I did want to share that before we got into uh, verse 69. I thought uh, it had great value in terms of um, adding to your understanding of all the things that happen from the time that we are in the womb, our souls are placed in the womb to the time that we have our last gulp, to the time that we cross the bridges. Um, all of this is adding up, inshallah, for your, you to have a greater understanding. So in Surah Al-Zumar, the crowds, verse 69, and I'll be giving you, inshallah, I read it very quickly at the end, I believe, of last class, if I did not forgive me, but I will be giving you the tafsir as well today. So in Surah Al-Zumar, the crowds, and the earth will shine with the glory of its Lord. The record of deeds will be placed open. The prophets and the witnesses will be brought forward and a just decision pronounced between them, and they will not be wronged in the least. It will be a new earth. All traces of injustice or inequity, darkness or evil will have gone. There will be the one universal light, the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will now illuminate all. Falsehood, pretense, and illusion will have disappeared. Everything will be seen in its true light. It is in such a scene of reality that judgment will be held. Before the throne of Allah, the book of each person's deeds and motives will be placed wide open 
which all will see. The prophets and preachers of truth and the martyrs who gave their lives or made their real sacrifices in the cause of truth will be in the court to give evidence, to give witness, and the decision pronounced will be absolutely just, for the judge will not only be just, but Allah will know every circumstance, and Allah's wisdom will give due weight to everything great or small. This will be one time that you don't have to worry about your subjective reality or somebody else's subjective reality or how you saw it differently than somebody else. For Allah is the all-seeing and Allah will know every single circumstance. Moving on to verse 70. And to every soul will be paid in full the fruit of its deeds. And Allah knoweth best all that they do. Allah knows better than any being or anything what we do. In an earthly court, a decision may possibly go wrong because the judge is deceived. Here, no deceit or mistakes will be possible. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows all and knows it better than anyone else can. And I wanted to talk about for just a moment my work for 18 years as an imam in the prison system. And recent stats show this, and I was actually working on some initiatives on this, but there's something out there known as the Innocence Project. And their research shows that 97% of federal and 94% of state cases result in plea deals, where somebody might have done something wrong, but they plead to a lesser sentence, or they might not have done something wrong, but because they can't afford good legal aid, or for whatever reason, they plea, make a plea deal with them. And by the way, this is a money-making operation. The prisons is a big money-making operation. Politicians love to build prisons because that gives people jobs. And then it warehouses humans like animals, desensitizes them and does no rehabilitation. And we have more people incarcerated in this country than any other country in the world. Extrapolations from the 281 known DNA exonerations in the US since the late 1980s, a conservative estimate is that 1% of the US prison population, approximately 20,000 people are falsely convicted. Well, we will not have that problem with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rate of wrongful convictions in the United States is estimated to be somewhere between 2% and 10%. That may sound low, but when applied to an estimated prison population of 2.3 million, the number becomes staggering. Can there really be 46,000 to 230,000 innocent people locked away? Those of us who are involved in exoneration work firmly believe that this is a very accurate figure. And so I think it's important for us to will, realize we will never have to hire a lawyer and it wouldn't do us any good and we won't be able to lie on that day. As we move on to verse 71, the unbelievers will be led to hell in crowds until when they arrive there, its gates will be opened and its keeper will say, did not messengers come to you from among yourselves? Sort of, I told you so moment, rehearsing to you the signs of your Lord and warning you of the meeting of this day of yours? The answer will be true. But the decree of punishment has been proved true against the unbelievers. Crowds. This is the word which gives the keynote to the surah, the crowds. If the soul does not stand to its own convictions or search out the truth by itself, it will be classed with the crowds that go to perdition. The keepers may be supposed to be angels who know nothing of the conditions of evil on this earth and are surprised at such crowds coming to the evil abode. In Surah Yunus, Surah 10, which means Jonah, the one that was swallowed by the big fish, the whale. Surah 10, verse 33, this is the word of thy Lord preserved true against those who rebel. Verily, they will not believe. The answer is perhaps given by other angels 
Yes, messengers were sent to them from among themselves to warn them and proclaim to them mercy through repentance. But the decree of Allah, which warned them of punishment, has now come true against them, for they rebuild and were haughty. They rebelled, that's supposed to be, and were haughty. They rejected truth, faith, and mercy. Just want to make a note to make that correction. Moving on to verse 72. To them will be said, enter ye the gates of hell to dwell therein, and evil is this abode of the arrogant. As elsewhere, the root of evil is pointed out to be in self-love and arrogance. Now, the definition of arrogance in Islam is to reject the truth. And so this is a very powerful verse. We end up going to hell because we rejected the truth. As elsewhere, sorry, Surah al-Baqarah is an example of what I said before. And Surah al-Baqarah um, is the cow or the heifer. Um, and verse 34, and behold, we said to the angels, bow down to Adam, then, and they bowed not. So Iblis, he refused and was haughty, and he was of those who rejected faith. And this verse is primary to us understanding that there is no prejudice in Islam. And this was the first incidence of prejudice, of racism, because the Iblis thought he was better because he was fire and Adam was made out of dirt. So he thought he was superior. In verse 73, and those who feared their Lord will be led to the gardens and crowds until behold, they arrive there. Its gates will be open and its keeper will say, peace be unto you, assalamu alaikum. Well done, well done, my good and faithful servants. Well have you done. Enter ye here to dwell therein. The righteous ones will also go in crowds and not be alone. There is now a true sorting out. Verses 73 through 75 are parallel in contrast to verses 71 and 72, which we have just reviewed. The angels in heaven are not surprised at the advent of the good and righteous souls, they are glad. They greet them with the salutation of peace. They congratulate them and they welcome them in. And I pray that Allah makes us to be among those people that go across that bridge easily. In Surah 74, they will say, praise be to Allah who has truly fulfilled Allah's promise to us and has given us this land in heritage. We can dwell in the garden as we will. How excellent a reward for those who work righteousness. This is said by the new arrivals in heaven, as is right. They begin with the praises of Allah, which shows it wants the satisfaction and their gratitude. In heritage in this verse, uh, that is as our portion. And so Surah Ali Imran, the family of Imran is what that means in verse 180. And let not those who covetously withhold of the gifts which Allah hath given them of his grace think that it is good for them. Nay, it will be the worse for them. Soon shall the things which they covetously withheld be tied to their necks like a twisted collar on the day of judgment. To Allah belongs the heritage of the heavens and the earth, and Allah is well acquainted with all that you do. So the gold that you hoard up, that your children will fight over, and if they've never had money, statistics say they will go through it within seven years. That money will be melted and poured over you as you are being purified in the hellfire, if you did not keep it pure and you did not handle your money according to the principles of Islam. In Ali Imran, the family of Imran, in verse 180, another metaphor, the heritage is now introduced. Material wealth 
or property is only called ours during our short life sentence here on earth. So all gifts are ours in trust only. Everything belongs to Allah. We are simply the trustees and we will answer to how we handle everything. So all gifts are ours in trust only. They ultimately revert to Allah, not Alan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to whom belongs all that is in the heavens or on the earth. In Surah Al-An'am, the cattle, verse 165, it is he who hath made you his agents, inheritors of the earth. He hath raised you in rank, some above others, that he may try you in the gifts he hath given you, those temporary gifts. For thy Lord is quick in punishment, yet he is indeed all forgiving, most merciful. In Surah al Baqarah, the heifer or the cow, in verse 30, Yusuf Ali translated Khalifa as vicegerent. Behold, thy Lord said to the angels, I will create a vicegerent, a property manager, an earth manager on earth. They said, Wilt thou place therein one who will make mischief therein and shed blood? Whilst we do celebrate thy praises and glorify thy holy name. He said, I know what you know not. Continuing with the tafsir of this verse in Surah Al-An'am, verse 165, it being Allah's plan to make Adam as representing mankind, his vicegerent on earth. And another idea implied in Khalifa is that of successor, heir, or inheritor. That is one who has the ultimate ownership after the present possessors to whom a life tenancy has been given by the owner have passed away. It's just a lifetime right, whatever you have. In Surah Al-Hijjah, the rocky track, verse 23 occurs, the striking word heirs, raridun, applied to Allah. We give life and death, and we are the heirs or inheritors. The same idea occurs in Surah Ali Imran, the family of Imran in verse 180. The translation here attempts to express both the ideas which the translator understood from the orig or original. And we go back to Surah al zumar uh, to verse 75. And thou wilt see the angels surrounding the throne divine on all sides singing glory and praises to the Lord. The decision between them at judgment will be in perfect justice and the cry on all sides will be praised be to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. These are the opening words of the first surah and they describe the atmosphere of the final bliss in heaven in the light of the countenance of the Lord, the universal Lord of all. And then we talk about the complete record, the report card. In Surah al kama the moon. And for those of you who are learning um, Arabic, you know that they're the Shamsi letters, which comes from the root of the sun, and they're the Kama letters, uh, which are the, the moon letters. And this determines whether we say Ar-Rahman instead of Al-Rahman. And then we say the other letters. So this is what that's all about, just to throw that out. Um, and so in Surah al kamar uh, verse uh, 52 to 55, all that they do is noted in their books of deeds. Every matter, small and great, is a record. And to the righteous, they will be in the midst of gardens and rivers and an assembly to truth in the presence of a sovereign omnipotent. Allahu Akbar. The point is that nothing which humans do is lost, good or evil. Everything give rise to an inevitable, an inevitable chain of consequences from which a release is only obtained by the intervention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's grace acting on an act a striving of the human will to repent 
and turn to Allah Azawajal, exalted be Allah. The record in the case of those who dishonored and violated truth will lead to their undoing. But in the case of those who honored the truth and adopted it so as to shine in their righteous lives, the result is expressed by four metaphors in an ascending degree of sublimity. Number one, they will be in the midst of gardens where rivers flow. Number two, they will be in an assembly of truth. Number three, in the presence of Allah. And number four, whose sovereignty is omnipotent. And we look at the tafsir of verse 55 of the moon of Surah 54, the gardens with rivers flowing beneath. In Surah Al-Zukhruf, ornaments of gold, Surah 43 and verse 70, enter ye the garden, ye and your wives in beauty and rejoicing. The gardens suggest all the bliss we can imagine through our senses. The garden is this is the type of all that is beautiful to eye, mind, and soul, all that is restful and in tune, a complete state of bliss, such as we can scarcely conceive of in this troubled world. Several metaphors indicate how we can try to picture that bliss to ourselves in this muddy vesture of decay. When we possess our bodily senses, the best conceptions we can form are through our senses perceptions. And the garden is a good symbol from that point of view. The next higher understanding of spiritual truth is through our intellect and social satisfaction. This is best symbolized by the assembly of truth, the gathering in which we sit with our fellows and enjoy the realization of truth and the dispensation of falsehoods and half-truths. But there is a higher conception still, something so intensely spiritual that it can only be expressed by reference to the presence of Allah. Muqtadir, which is translated omnipotent in the verse, implies something more. On the eighth Detention form the notes, not only complete mastery, but the further idea that the mastery arises from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's own nature and depends on nothing else whatsoever. And in Surah Anur, which means the light, verse 24, our bodies will testify against us on the day when their tongues their hands and their feet will bear witness against them as to their actions. If we try to lie and say, oh no, I didn't do that. The hand's gonna say, oh yes, I know I was created to serve Allah, but they commanded me to do this evil thing, to do that which was prohibited or to avoid that which was prescribed. Our own limbs and faculties are the strongest witness against us if we misuse them for evil deeds instead of using them for the good deeds for which they were given to us. In Surah Al-Kaf, Surah 50, verse 21 and 29, and we'll look at, begin to look at the tafsir of each verse in verse 21, and there will come forth every soul with each will be an angel to drive and an angel to bear witness. Several interpretations are possible leading to the same truth, that the judgment will be set up, the record will be produced, the good and bad deeds will speak for and against, and complete justice will be done, each act leading to its own due fruit. The angel to drive and the angel to bear witness may be the recording angels on the left and right from verse 17, or two, it may not be the angels, but the evil deeds will drive like taskmasters and the good deeds will bear witness for the soul on trial. Or the third opinion of scholars, his or her misdeed or misused limbs and faculties will drive him or her to his or her doom, while his or her well-used limbs and faculties will witness 
for him or her. So this is powerful. And again, I warned all of you from the beginning of these classes that the descriptions are very graphic, perhaps like something we've never seen, some of them. And inshallah, it is my prayer that it will shake our hearts spiritually, that it will make us quiver and question how are we doing spiritually? What are the provisions that we would have if this were to happen to us today? What have we prepared for that journey? And so in terms of the report card time in Surah Qaf, verses 21 to 29 in the tafsir of those, in verse 22, it will be said, thou was heedless of this. Now have we removed thy veil and sharp is thy sight this day. And that's not the physical sight, brothers and sisters, that's the spiritual sight. The clearness of vision will now be even greater. We will no longer be spiritually blind. We're going to know what is, what was. In verse 19, and the stupor of death will bring truth before his or her eyes. This is the thing which thou was trying to escape, the thing that we do not even want to talk about. What is stupor or unconsciousness to this probationary life will be the opening of the eyes to the next world, for death is the gateway between the two. Once through that gateway, we will realize how the things which we neglected or looked upon as remote are the intimate realities and the things which we seem to loom large in our eyes in this world were shadows that had fled. The things we wanted to avoid are the things that have really come to pass. The good and evil will realize the truth now in its intensity. In verse 23, and his or her companion will say, here is his or her record ready with me. I've completed the report cards. The word Karan in this verse is companion. So if we take number one of the construction suggested in slide 191, the companion will be one of the recording angels mentioned above in verse 21, perhaps the one that drives or perhaps the third one mentioned in verse 18, for he has the record ready with him. So I gave you those three, and here again, this is the opinion of the majority of the scholars. Not a word does he or she utter, but there is a sentinel by him or her ready to note it. That angel is the recorder. Then each word spoken is taken down by a guardian, a raqib. This has been construed to mean that the guardian only records words, not thoughts, which are not uttered. And again, this adds to a little piece of the class that I will be doing, inshallah, at Rollins on, uh, that I told you about on February the 3rd. The recorders mentioned in the last verse make a complete record in order to supply motives and springs of action, which will affect the degrees of status in the hereafter. The three together, individuals or kinds, make the honorable recorders, kariman, katibin, plural, not dual number, mentioned in Surah 72, verse 11. There are among us some that are righteous and some the contrary. We follow divergent paths. In Surah Al Intifar, Infatar, sorry, uh, Surah 82, verses 10 and 11. But verily, over you are appointed angels to protect you, kind and honorable, writing down your deeds. And Surah Qaf, Surah 50, verse 24, the sentence will be throw, throw into hell every contumacious, stubbornly disobedient rejecter of Allah. The original for throw here and in verse 26 to follow is in the dual number, which some commentators explain by saying that the dual form is used for emphasis, as if the verb throw, throw were twice repeated. Examples of this are found in Arabic. 
But is it possible that the duel refers to the two angels mentioned in verse 17 and 21? In that case, the companion in verse 27 to follow will be the third one mentioned in verse 8 and 23. In any case, the third one will be the one on whose record the sentence will be passed. In verse 25, who forbade what was good, transgressed all bounds, cast doubts and suspicion. Who set up another God besides Allah, throw him into a severe penalty. His or her companion will say, our Lord, I did not make him or her transgress, but he or she was him or herself far astray. In verse 25, who forbade what was good, transgressed all bounds, cast doubts and suspicions, who set up another God besides Allah. Sorry, I didn't move that slide. Some people understand by companion here an evil associate in the world, an evil one who misled. Our Lord, one man speaks, I did not, etc. Yet he uses the plural pronoun in saying our Lord. This is beautifully appropriate as he is speaking so as to include the person to be judged as if he were to say, Thou art my Lord or the Lord of us angels or of all creation, but thou art his or her Lord also. For thou discherish him or her and warn him or her, and he or she owned, owed duties to thee. Neither the recording angels nor the misused limbs and faculties nor anything else, whatever was responsible for the evil. It was the personal responsibility of the doer, him or herself, for, from his or her free will. We will not be able to blame anyone else. In verse 28, he will say, dispute not with each other in my presence. I had already in advance sent you warnings. It is suggested that sinners whose record is black, driven into a corner, accuse others of misleading them. The others may be the recorders or their faculties, or opportunities, or surroundings, or their associates in the world, or anything but themselves. Such recriminations are not allowed in the court of Allah, in the court of true justice, the only court of justice. Besides, personal responsibility had already been clearly preached to them in Allah's message, and they had been warned of the consequences. You is in the plural number, all of you who are before the judgment seat had clear warning of the consequences of your conduct. The word changes not before me and I do not the least injustice to my servants. Abd has two plurals. Abd as here means all servants of Allah. That is all Allah's creatures. Abid has the further connotation of servants of Allah, devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's service. It is translated in many cases by the word devotees, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's devotees. And you'll, if you have several different English translations, you will see the various words that I'm talking about today. The sentence before the judgment seat is pronounced with perfect justice. It does not change and requires no change. The inevitable consequence of sin must follow. The time for mercy is past. There cannot and will not be a repeal. The only thing is that if you did say la ilaha illallah, your sins will be burned out for that period of time that you have to go over the hellfire or into the hellfire and then you will be eventually in the paradise. That day our sight will be crystal clear, but it will not be helpful. In Surah 19 verse 30, at how clearly will they disbelievers see and hear the day when they will appear before us. 
So we might not have good eyesight here. We might be wearing glasses or contacts here. We will not need them in that new life. Our spiritual eyes will be perfect sight. And remember in a dimension where there is no time. So we won't know how long this lasts. We will just be in it. You talk about the true meaning of just be. There will be no time in this dimension. In Surah As-Sajda, the Confederates, verse 12, if only thou couldst see when the guilty ones will bend low their heads before their Lord saying, our Lord, we have seen and we have heard. Now then send us back to the world. We will work righteousness for we do indeed now believe with certainty, but it will be too late need to find our certainty here in the here and now. In life on the new plane, there will be no room for deception or self-deception. There will be no more delusion, no more illusion. The most hardened sinner will see the truth and the justice of the day of account. He or she will wish he or she could be sent back, but it will be too late. The world as we know it will have already passed away the angel will bear witness. Allah commands that the disbelievers be thrown into the fire. Every stubborn rejecter of truth, those who did not fulfill their duties to kith and kin and give in charity. Those who transgress the limits in spending speech and behavior, those who set up partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one beautiful hadith uh, recorded by Ahmed, may Allah be pleased with him, those who set up partners with Allah, the Sadi says, a neck from the fire will appear and will speak, saying, today I have been entrusted with thee. Every obstinate tyrant, everyone who ascribed another God with Allah, and he who took a life without right, the neck will then close in on them and throw them in the midst of Jahannam. So we see here again, a description unlike anything we can imagine. Man and devil dispute before Allah. His companion will say, refer to the devil who is entrusted to every man. According to Abdullah bin Abbas, Mujahid, Qatada and others. The devil will disown the unbeliever and make clear that he did not lead him or her astray. You see, the devil cannot lead you astray. All the devil has been given to permission is to give you a thought. If you manifest that thought, it's on you because you willed it. But if you say, then you have eradicated that thought and you begin how? Bismillah rahman rahim So the devil will disown the unbeliever and make it clear to him, I didn't lead you. I just tempted you and you incubated it. Mankind is misguided by his or her lower self, the nafs. And the message of Allah said, your greatest enemy is your nafs by your side, meaning your lower desires. And by your side, the scholars say, refers to our jaws because this small tongue is full of deadly venom sometimes and causes the greatest of sins with niyama, gossip, uh, tail bearing, and then, of course, teaching something wrong. In Surah Ibrahim, Abraham, verse 22, and Satan will say when the matter is decided, it was Allah who gave you a promise of truth. I too promised, but I failed in my promise to you. I had no authority over you except to call you, but ye listened to me. Then reproach not me, but reproach your own souls. I cannot listen to your cries, nor can you listen to mine. I reject your former act in associating me with Allah. For wrongdoers, there must be a grievous penalty. After judgment, evil declares itself in true colors. Frankly, it says, I deceived you. The promise of Allah was true, but you believe rather you believe me rather than Allah. I had no power to force you. I had but to call you and you came running after me. You came running. He whispered to you, you don't have any money and that dress you can only buy or that suit on interest and you did it. You chose it because your nafs was more powerful than your iman. 
Did you think I was equal with Allah? I knew too well that I was not and never could be. If you did wrong, you must suffer the penalty. And an alternative interpretation of this sentence may be, I had already beforehand rebelled against Allah with whom you associated me. So I'm just uh, wanted to look at my notes just one minute here. Um, In Surah Al-Haqqaq, the inevitable hour, Surah 69, verses 18 to 19, that day shall you be brought to judgment, not an act of yours that ye hide will be hidden. So we hide things maybe from our spouses. We hide things from our children. Our children hide things from us. But on that day, we will not be able to hide anything and everything we have ever hidden will be open for the whole world at that time in that dimension to see. Then he or she that will be given his or her record and his or her right hand will say, ah, oh, here, read my record. They're going to be proud of their record. They're going to say, read it. It's okay. Read it. The righteous are described as those who are given their record in their right hand, the hand of blessing at judgment in Surah Al-Isra'a. And Isra'a is the nightly journey, Surah 17, verse 71. In Surah Al-Isra'a, the night journey, verse 71 day, we shall call together all human beings with their respective imams. Those who are given their record in their right hand will read it with pleasure. And they will not be dealt with unjustly in the least. And next week, inshallah, I will talk to you about the various meanings of iman in, imam in the Quran and what that means. And I think that will be very empowering for you. And then we will continue, obviously, in how that relates to uh, death, dying, and the hereafter, inshallah. And so now I will open up the mic for uh, comments, questions, pondering, reflecting.